Hey nerds, what's up? So I've been thinking recently, always dangerous. A few elements of several videos I've published in like the last six to eight months, along with some experiences I've had with authors recently, has me ruminating on the relationships between authors, social media, and sales. Now we've been having a lot of discussions recently about how there has been a shift in publishing. Publishing is changing, and I think publishing is usually always changing, but I feel like we've had those conversations a lot more in recent years. Obviously that has a lot to do with the changing landscape of the internet, how things are sold, and obviously just the sheer number of things that are being published. And a lot of the elements I'm sort of interested within this sphere is authors and publicity and their need to become a personality or go viral on TikTok, interact with fans, or even a new discussion on needing a fan base or some sort of social following to even get a publishing contract with one of the traditional publishers. Now, I generally think our knee-jerk reaction to this stuff is negative. We don't want the purity of our literature to be sullied by the need for TikTok followers. And I'm definitely guilty of that. I have these negative knee-jerk reactions to when I hear these things. And whenever I have that immediate reaction, it always makes me want to dig a little deeper and research a bit and see if there are multiple sides to the discussion. So today I wanna to explore how we got here, how true any of these claims are, and the positives and negatives for authors when it comes to maintaining a social presence online. Now, before we get further, yes, I have a cold, which is why my voice sounds this way. I hope you can bear with me for this video. Hopefully I will be fully well next week. Anyway, see you after the jump. A bit ago, I did a collaboration with Library of a Viking on unpopular opinions. And one of these opinions led us to a general discussion of Brandon Sanderson. And we ended up expressing admiration for the empire he has built, kind of his social presence, and how he has really leveraged a lot of different avenues to increase his popularity in the fantasy sphere. Now, if you aren't super familiar with that side of Brandon Sanderson, he is the one who created his own company, Dragonsteel, and kind of handles a lot of things that I would say traditional authors don't. He, you know, sells merch, has an entire con just for his books, really has built a business around his authorship in ways like I would say traditionally authors don't. Anyway, what really surprised me was some of the comments in response to this. People did not like that we had rolled in a discussion about his business acumen into discussions on him being a good or talented author. In fact, in some cases, people felt that his business success was actually antithetical for him being a good and talented writer. That was really interesting to me, and actually it's quite a philosophical question at its root, isn't it? Can anything that is really popular or truly easily digestible for the masses really be considered good art. I have tried to lightly address this topic in other videos, like my old video, is there an objective bar for good and bad literature? But ultimately I think that part of the question is out of the scope of this video. What I do wanna highlight is the idea that it's pretty easy for all of us to digest the idea that there is an undiscovered genius author out there that we will never find simply because their works did not become popular enough for us to discover. However, on the flip side, I feel like we are much more resistant to the idea of what is insanely popular actually is the best. It is the highest quality. There seems to be some sort of curve for when you are underrated and then you get to a point of popularity where now you can only be overrated. I'd like to posit that all four positions are potentially true, which is there are probably undiscovered authors and works that deserve to remain undiscovered because they're not very good. There are probably little known authors who are geniuses and if only their book could find the right audience, we would recognize how incredible they are. There are probably popular works that should not be as popular or rather they are not quality. Uh, and there's popular works that are quality, that are some of the best we really have. So why is there kind of an unequal resistance to those two ideas? Honestly, I don't think I would have thought much of it if I hadn't recently read a book uh, that Liana from Liana's Library gave me, which was Shakespeare is a Woman and Other Hearsays. This book explores the authorship question of Shakespeare that has been around for quite some time, which is, is the Shakespeare we think of, the one from Stratford-upon-Avon, 
actually the Shakespeare who wrote the works of Shakespeare. Many of the potential other candidates that people offer are aristocrats like the 17th Earl of Oxford or Francis Bacon. What I found fascinating is one of the responses to these inquiries that's highlighted in the book is that people were resistant to the idea that someone of privilege made Shakespeare because they had so fallen in love with the story of quiet, born genius that didn't need to be educated and didn't need privilege to know all these things. He was just born a genius. And if the Shakespeare who actually wrote Shakespeare was an aristocrat, that sort of part of the story would no longer be true. The very idea of our everyday genius being an aristocrat who was extremely privileged, privileged ruined the story many of us had told ourselves. Look, I'm sure it's not all self-projection, but there's gotta be this idea that maybe we're attached to where we want the world to be fair. We want anyone with talent to be able to make it. There's maybe this element that authors who are particularly good at being a social president, presence, being a personality, or that already have a large following before becoming authors somehow ruins the purity of that idea that anyone can make it because these authors had something extra other than just their written work. We like quiet genius, and especially if we narrow focus to the fantasy genre, genre which is obviously what I usually cover, we may find kindred spirits in our authors you know, there are stereotypes about people who love fantasy, whether they're true or not. Maybe we are introverted, we are sometimes socially awkward, we're nerdy, we're quiet, we're different. And we would want, or at least want to allow our authors to be the same. We would want them to essentially be able to succeed if they were like that too. But the idea of them having to become a personality, something that many of us may feel that we would be incapable of, feels unfair. And I'm not gonna lie, obviously I would hate if a very talented author failed in a changing landscape today because they could not maintain an online personality. So I wanna explore this further by talking a little bit about interactions I've had with authors recently. Now I wanna say I'm particularly talking about traditionally published authors. And what I've noticed is that a lot of my conversations involving getting interviews or ARCs often come uh, from the authors themselves and not from agents or publishers. I thought BK Publishing had a really interesting thought on the matter and phrased it really well. Publishers have managed to stay afloat in this worsening marketplace by shifting more and more marketing responsibility to authors to cut costs and prop up sales. In recognition of this reality, most book proposals from experienced authors now have an extensive section, often 10 to 25 pages, on the authors as marketing platform and what the authors will do to publicize and market the books. Publishers still fulfill important roles in helping craft books to succeed and making books available in hundreds of thousands of sales channels, but whether the books move in those channels depends primarily on how authors support their books. Now again, I can't say that that is valid for all publishers, but it is pretty in line with what I have noticed recently. And don't, don't read into it. Don't, I'm not calling out any specific interactions I've had. I've had various behind the scenes interactions, so don't try to pinpoint what it is. But just like the authors who are contacting me often seem that it is the authors who are moving forward the getting out of their book, of the interviews, of sending arcs and you know review copies. I've talked about this in another video, but I think one aspect of this is just the sheer number of books being published today. Even ignoring self-published books, the amount of books being published by traditional publishers has, rised, has risen incredibly. And when we add in the fact that other content from other mediums has also risen and increased exponentially, like things from video games, TV shows, movies, and distractions on social media platforms, holding a reader's attention has also become more difficult than ever. And on top of that, or perhaps related to that, supposedly the average book sales are falling. Now, the stat we often hear that majority of books don't sell more than 12 copies in their lifetime was actually debunked and was also skewed by self-publishing numbers. But I did find an analyst who looked at the top 10 biggest US publishers and found a different but telling story. This analyst found that 66% of books were selling less than 1,000 copies in their first year, with 15% of those being under 12 copies in their first year. Now, on the other hand, the top 1% of books were selling 50,000 copies or more in their first year. 
This is also telling because it probably means that most publishers make the majority of their income from their top 1% of authors. So they are incentivized to spend most of their ad revenue on these authors who are consistently bringing them in the most money. After focusing on their top highest earners, then they might spread the wealth around to some of their medium earners. Thus, as book acquisitions rise, and the amount of choices for media continues to rise, it logically follows that many authors will begin to feel the brunt of commercial success fall to them individually. While I don't want to ignore the important role of publishers who provide things like advances and the ability to get into numerous bookstores, advertising does in general seem to be shifting to the authors. Now, before we move on to the next section, I do want to highlight that it's probably very important to recognize that what success looks like is going to be very different for different authors. Obviously, we have the level of household name, which very few, if any, authors ever achieve. In fantasy, I think of J.K. Rowling and George R.R. Martin, who are probably some of the most well-known names to the general public. They are household name status. Then I'd say below that, there is what I would just call a known name, which is a name that would be known within fantasy spheres. If you read fantasy, you know this author's name, but the general public who isn't invested in fantasy wouldn't necessarily know their names. I think of Brandon Sanderson and Steven Erickson. These are likely people who haven't gotten TV shows or movie deals, which usually are the only thing that can get you up into household name. There is another tier of success below this, which is actually some authors I have met and talked with, which is they aren't necessarily a super known name to the average fan. I am sure people who spend a lot of time on the internet or in fandom spaces would know their names, but just even among fantasy communities, they might not be known, but they sell an extremely consistent number of books and make a very good living off of being an author. They might not be super famous, they might not have a super known name, but their income is consistent and they make a living off writing. I think a lot of authors would be perfectly pleasant, perfectly happy with this level of fame, assuming that they just enjoy writing and wanna make a living off of it. Now, what's interesting is I think more than ever, social media presence is probably affecting these kinds of authors because I feel like if you have a TV show or a movie, obviously that's doing a lot of publicity for you. If you've already made to the point where you are pretty known, you have momentum that probably doesn't need a social media presence unless you want it. Whereas for a medium author, because of the way we buy books is changing, people aren't walking into bookstores and picking things off the shelf as frequently, it may be more important for those authors. That may be who it's affecting the most. I don't have proof for this, just a theory. Going back to publishers, things are obviously changing a lot for them too. Obviously getting picked up by an agent and then a publisher is a lot of hard work and it is very difficult to do. And I wanted to do a little research into this landscape of publishing. Now, um, some of the research I found was from a bit ago, like 2008, 2009, but I think a few of those things are still applicable. I also just wanted to look at the numbers. Uh, the sheer number of manuscripts publishers are getting are staggering. Now, the numbers I found did have kind of a big difference. I found a number that for medium publishers, they probably see about 5,000 manuscripts a year, up to big publishers, which may see 20,000 a year. So obviously the spread between 5,000 and 20,000 is quite large, but either way you slice it, this is a lot of manuscripts. That ranges from getting 15 to 60 queries a day, which is just a lot to short, a lot to sort through. Based on my research, like I said, that was slightly out of date, but I think probably is still relevant. A lot of these queries don't even make it to a manuscript page level. They are thrown out for not following the rules of queries, for querying publishers that don't even publish their type of book, for being just strange letters. If they get to a first page or a paragraph, they say they can often tell very quickly if something is riddled with errors or not ready to publish. These things can get probably like 90% of stuff thrown out before they even get there. Okay, but even then, you still have more books than you can probably publish. So how do you sort through them then? And at that point, does someone with a proven track record, with a proven social media following, edge out other people? Maybe, maybe it is a factor publishers are looking at. Now, despite this being claims that I have seen a lot, I just can't find any proof that that's true. So maybe, I could see it being a possibility of throwing your manuscript over the edge. Now with all this info, let's finally circle around to 
social media, and authors. I already talked about how our gut reaction to someone getting a book deal because of their social media following feels icky. It's not pure. But I think we should be careful about how far, how far we extrapolate that because many of the people in our own beloved self-published fantasy industry have been picked up by traditional publishers. And I think probably a big aspect of that probably was their verified sales, their social media presence or awards like SPFBO that they could leverage. And whenever I see a self-published author getting traditionally published because that's what they want, yeah, I'm really happy for them. And if their social media presence played a role, that one, I would feel still happy. I'd be like, good for them. They deserve it. In a weird way, I don't really think this is any different than just another form of networking. Networking has always been a thing. Connections have always been a thing. And maybe a social media presence is just one other thing that might potentially give someone a leg up, but it's probably not the whole thing. Since the beginning of time, there has been some sort of leg up for authors. I was just doing like a quick dig into how J.R.R. Tolkien got published because I realized I never looked it up and never really knew. And obviously the information was not as like clear cut as I wanted it to be. But the man went to Oxford and worked on the Oxford Dictionary and then worked at really prestigious universities. And then it was like, and then he got published. <laughs> and so it's like, he probably had a lot of connections just based on that information. Now, obviously publishing in 1937 looked very different than publishing today, but I would say he had a leg up. Of course, there are other just as infamous stories about famous authors who did not follow that track. One I obviously think of is JK Rowling, who we all know the story of how she got started, really plucked from obscurity. So I would say some authors get published because they have connections. Some probably still get published when they don't. And once again, social media is probably just a network factor in all of this and not the end all be all, from what I can tell. Honestly, where social media concerns me with authors is actually inspired by a video I did on a Fonda Lee Twitter conversation in a video where I've noticed that some authors are just choosing to leave social platforms because of the mental health degradation it causes. I'm actually more worried for my authors who already have publishing deals and are trying to sell books and feel that they need a social presence and what that may do to them. I have a little tiny social presence and the internet sucks. <laughs> and I've also talked about that in videos. I can't imagine how exhausting that must be for authors whose livelihood depends perhaps on that social media engagement now and it's something that maybe isn't enjoyable for all of them. Or to the extreme, like not only very unenjoyable, but degradating to their mental health. I just feel like previously authorship was really different. I had made comments as recent as like a decade ago. I had talked about how interesting I thought that with, you know, actors, actresses, musicians, other famous individuals that have fandoms, their face is really usually attached to those things and how authors weren't. There are so many times I would be so surprised by like an author picture at the back of a book or like after I'd read several books by someone realizing I never knew what they looked like because not all books have an author picture. I feel like it is actually more common now than it used to be and how that has changed so much. I feel like I know what my authors look like so much more now than literally just a decade ago. And obviously that's just an anecdotal comment. It's just a story. I, I don't have like data on that, but I do think it's interesting that I feel like authors previously could be more obscure and removed from their art. Generally, publishers were the people you were relying on to advertise your books. The advertising channels were much smaller. And I just wonder if like a lot of authors didn't sign up for that. A lot of authors maybe didn't realize that that would be a part of the deal. And that's a bummer for them. Not everyone's gonna wanna be a business. I think some people are probably just gonna wanna write the stories that they have to write. But with the changing landscape, I wonder if it's gonna be increasingly difficult to ignore that social side of things. Again, just a supposition, but something I've kind of started to notice. So in summation, publishing is changing, and a lot of that has to do with the changing landscape of the internet. I wonder as more and more books are getting published each year, and there's less and less wealth to spread around in publishers, if the brunt of advertising is falling more and more into the authors, and what that means for authors themselves and also us as fans and how we interact with books. I do not believe that social media is somehow going to be the end all be all factor to getting published. I think it'll just fall into another element of a leg up that there are many of 
when you are trying to get published. At the same time, while I don't worry about that aspect of it, like I said, I do worry about my authors who maybe don't want to maintain an online presence after they've already been published, but feel like they need to in order to be successful. I would love to know your thoughts on this author and social media issue, just because I've seen a lot of rumblings about people being worried that a following is gonna be needed or it can only be famous people who publish. Again, I'm not worried about that, but I would love to hear your thoughts on anything I've talked about today and any insight you may have. I also want to throw a quick thank you to Fantasy Awash, who fielded so many questions from me on romanticy authors, because I obviously don't read romanticy and I wanted to know about their social following. Unfortunately, like that entire section and all of that research, I ended up scrapping. So it's not in here, but she did spend a significant amount of time telling me things I needed to know. So thank you for your contributions that didn't make it, but I think they made the heart of the video better, right? See, anytime you guys wanna complain that my video essays are way too long, just think of how much stuff I left on the cutting room floor. This is really, this is a shortened version. <laughs> Anyway, if you like these kind of discussions and videos, please like and subscribe. That is the best way to support me. And if you want to see what I'm currently reading, please check my Instagram at bookborn.reviews. I'll see you next time. Bye.